Welcome, and again, thank you for accepting this, uh, Phil. Really, really appreciate it. Um, let me, I mean, I think you don't need introduction for, for an audience, but um, let me just say that Phil Elfram is, the, is a singer, songwriter, producer as well. Um, is the um, leader of bands such as um, The Microphones, and the uh, Mount Erie. Um, um, let, let me ask you, you let, just follow up question. Um, you were recently taken into tour, your most recent the, uh, microphone album. I, I'm just curious, how did that go? I mean, you went through Europe and are you planning to continue the tour? No, yeah, we're fin finished with that. Uh, it was really fun. It was really fun. We we only did a few shows in Europe, and but yeah, a few weeks in the United States. But now it's done. We did the last one two weeks ago or something. Okay, I'm glad to hear that. Um, so I mean the 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 idea is to have this conversation about your office, um, the Glow part two, which is, uh, which is turning 21 years this year. Um, and I know the, 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 the rest of the world remember where they were in September 11, 2001, um, but you in particular remember quite well for very different reasons. Uh, where were you in, in that day? You were launching your, your album to, to the world. Uh, I know they're very different events, but I wanted to ask you, I mean, if they, if these two events happening that same day uh, play out some connection retroactively, um, I mean, to me as, as listener, definitely it reflects some of the, of the uncertainty of the time, the insecurity, um, um, but but I, I wanted to ask you. Of obviously, it, it it was not intentionally, but I I wanted to ask you if it's if it plays in your memory some sort of connection with 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 the time, or is it remains two different events? Yeah, I there are two different events. I think that I remember when I think back about that day. I had finished recording the album in probably March. And then it was released in September. So back then, especially, but even now, I'm usually focused on the present moment more. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. uh, I finished recording the album in March and probably by April, I had moved on. It was already an old feeling. And then April, May, September, by the time September came, I was already thinking about um, I associate thinking of September 11th more with uh, the album Mount Erie because that's, I mm. remember thinking about the beginning ideas of, of that album and those songs in that American context of like weird trauma and uh, crazy patriotism and all, you know, George W. Bush and uh, flat, mm. little flags flying on all the vehicles. It was just like a really crazy time, of course. Mm still it's like way crazier now but back then at the time it felt like what's happening so but yeah I think of the glow part two as an earlier thing even though yeah technically it was released publicly on that day I was a little bit and for me personally I was uh ahead of schedule in my own head yeah of course I mean it was it was produced previously and it this event happened to to happen that that same day, so you know it makes perfect sense. Um, you know, you know, as I was, you know, researching and I was seeing a bunch of reviews on the album. Um, the word, or, or rather, the sentiment, anguish, um, uneasiness, uh, come into the description um, of of the album. Um, and, and, and to me, I don't, I don't know about you, and that's what's my question. Uh, to me, anguish is a difficult 
um, sentiment to reflect in music. I mean, you can pretty much tell when, when music is, is tearful, is, is happy or angry mm -hmm. or, or sad, but when, when, when it transmit or communicate this sense of, you know, um, um, uneasiness is, is quite, quite difficult. And this album in particular can could communicate some of that. Do, do you think anguish or, or or uneasiness is it plays a role in, in, in your music, particularly in that album? Was could could it be inspiring? Um or, or, or how how do you, how do you see it? Yeah, I don't think it was my goal to create something mm -hmm. that felt like anguish. That wasn't an intention, but maybe I can hear it a little bit or, or some kind of, I, I don't use a lot of major chords. I use a lot of minor mm. chords. And so maybe that's mm. part of it is sort of a little mm. bit of a, I don't know about anguish, but like somber or melancholy a little bit or some kind of like serious depth, even though there's also like joy and transcendence and, and beauty, I hope. Yeah, anguish is not something I am really like trying to put into the world. I want to explore the full spectrum. What, what about, I mean, and this is something that probably could resonate more. What about the, you know, the, the eeriness mm -hmm. and, 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 and the uncanny? Mm -hmm. um, is, is that, is that something that you find inspiring in your music? Is that something that you intentionally try to communicate? Yeah, yeah, I feel like that's an important um, that's an important element in artwork. Is something not like eerie has a lot of baggage. The word eerie or uncanny has mm. baggage mm. because it's uh, people hear it as maybe like a dark or a negative thing or scary or bad but i mm. i think of it more as like a, it brings the thing to life in a way it it implies mm. something beyond what we can understand it it's like almost like the spirit of the thing so if i'm making um just a straightforward beautiful song with like regular chords traditional pop chords or whatever that's cool and beautiful but maybe boring if it doesn't have a little bit of like an eeriness to it and that's what mm. i'm drawn towards in even listening to like whatever contemporary pop music sometimes it does have something like what's that sound what's that feeling there that's what makes it good and different does that make sense i, I yeah yeah it makes perfect sense actually i i can hear that you 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 try to aim at the contrast, the contrast yeah. between beauty and the uncanny. Or, you know, know, which, or maybe yes. like they're both, they're interwoven or like mm. there's beauty, but it like peaking through the cracks is this uh, eeriness or peaking the spirit the, of it. Cracks. Yes. I, I, there, there is, a, there is an, um, uh, a creator, not from music, that he has been cited as, as one of the influence of this album, which is David Lynch, uh, that also kind of like could do that, could bring beautiful moments into this very somber scene. Um, but besides him, I wanted to ask you your, your other potential inspirations. I believe your surrounding is part of, part of that. I mean, I'm talking about the Pacific Northwest, the nature, um, how, how did that, you know, was a, a source of, you know, um, motivation, ins inspiration in, in, in your music back then? It, yeah, it's true. I, I've always thought a lot about trying to root the things I make in a specific place on the planet. And for me, that's mm -hmm. usually been, I mean, it's always been the Pacific Northwest because that's where I have lived. Um, mm. Yeah it's that's important to me i don't want to make something that feels like it came from nowhere or it comes from mm. you know some kind of anonymous place um mm. i don't know why i am that way exactly but that's what feels important and normal to me mm. um and in in that regard do you i mean i i know this 
to be a little bit, you know, annoying to ask, but, you know, sometimes the, the album has been interpreted as a concept album, although that, that label has, it's, to me, it's a little bit, you know, um, um, overrated, if you, if you will. To, to, I can definitely see a theme in the album. I mean, and, 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 and it translates into sound with these forms and that you can hear in the, in the distance with these interludes that, you know, are throughout the albums. But I, I, I wanted to ask you, do you about, you know, again, your, your aim in, in, in writing this album, was it more theme driven? Is, is there really a concept behind it? Um, you know, I think, I can't remember if, so, I made these four main microphones albums, Don't Wake Me Up, It Was Hot We Stayed in the Water, The Glow Part Two, and then Mount Erie. And I can't remember if I realized it after making It Was Hot We Stayed in the Water, but I realized that they sort of all um, sync up with the elements of nature, air, water, fire, and earth. And it wasn't, I didn't start out with that intention, but I think I realized it after making the water one. I was like, oh, I made a water album. Oh, that first one was very about air and clouds and dreams. Um, mm. And then maybe it was about halfway through the glow part two, which has got, you know, fire on the cover and it's about the glow. Um, it's mm. about, mm. I mean, very, very loosely. And then Mount Erie, I guess, would be the, stone earth but um if there's a concept it would be that I, I don't know no i i wrote the songs just sort of naturally as they came out they were all just mm. like coming out that way there's they were sort of a document of life and like the types of conversations that my friends and i would have the amateur philosophy that young people do with each other <laughs> What would you, would you mind ex expanding on that? I mean, what, what, well, I just, I think of, I sing about this in um, microphones in 2020. I characterize uh -huh. that time in my life as, yeah, I was 22 years old. Um, <clears throat> I characterize that time thinking of, we, we didn't have TVs or phones or internet mm -hmm. or anything. So we were just like young punks living uh, idealistically and really like sleeping out on the lawn under a blanket just like every, going over to a friend's house for dinner looking at the moon talking about like oh wow outer space it's infinite wow it's really right there let's go swimming tomorrow like just like really passionate about these the big mysteries of life and that's that's in the songs mm. and i mm. still feel those ways but maybe i just feel less uh like on fire about them well, as, as you described the album, so so the album is actually, in your view, is is quite optimistic. It's why uh, it, um, vital, you know. It it transmits yeah. the um, yes, okay. Yeah, that. and also what was going on for me, and that if there is sorrow in it, I mean, I was going through like interpersonal stuff, sort of like the end of mm. a relationship, but I didn't want to make an album about like my heart is broken, blah blah blah. I I mm. wanted. Go deeper than that and so I think mm. I tried to tr take an angle about like expanding my own personal conception of what interpersonal relationships can be like this romantic relationship is ending but but I'm still fr great friends with this person and like there's also this mm. vast sort of more ephemeral universal love that that I feel and you know I wanted to zoom out and take a bigger picture and I didn't want to write another like teenager heartbreak album because the world has enough of that. Yeah, I, I can definitely see that when you reach the the song, uh, you'll you'll be in the air because it it expands mm -hmm. into this macro. You I know, think level. also of the song, um, I felt your shape, where I'm talking about like, uh huh, hugging someone and being like. Oh, I never actually noticed that you, this, this is you. I was like, bef I was hugging in a different style before, before I was just like <clears throat> squeezing and grasping, but like to hug and like actually 
notice the person for their own self, mm. for their own actual shape and, mm. and identity. Mm. That's that's what I was known for. But the, again, it's like a 22 year old and doing some amateur philosophy and exploration. Well, those are for not for nothing. Those are considered formation years. So mm -hmm. you know, it's it, it, and it, and it, the, and does it transpire into today's work? I mean, those formation years and, and yeah, into sure. your yeah yeah definitely. I mean, it's all an ongoing evolution. So, so Phil, let, let's let's talk about the the production of the album. I'm, I mean, I'm 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 lately I'm big into the uh, behind the scene of production and and the production of this album. It's fascinating. For I I have to confess, for a while, I'm, I'm talking about prior to to internet. I discovered this this album probably a year after it came out. Um, back then, you didn't have much access to to information about the album in the internet. So for a while, I was the, of the impression, misconception, um, that this album was a, a, a home studio album. Um, it has that quality, mm -hmm. um, that intimacy, if you will. Um, um, besides, it's, 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 it's purposely made in a way the best metaphor that I can come is is like a mass of miniatures mm -hmm. that you 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 have the wrong perception that there here's this bunch of demos mm -hmm. put together. Um, but later I realize, and you have expressed it in in interviews, that it's part of your aesthetic. In fact, you call that a, a very fascinated term. You call it um, uh, charismatic sloppiness, <laughs> um, and which I mean, I, I that idea I found fascinating. Um, you you purposely embrace something that is on a key, um, and, and then is is as a whole is epic. Um, how this came to be? Is it part of your? personality is it part of a methodology it's just an aesthetic um yeah i think it's all of those things i think that it's um when i first started making my own music and recording i realized that maybe it was even before i started recording because i played the drums in some bands in high school uh -huh. and we played shows and so I think even back then I would start to notice when we would play with other bands that to me, it sounded like they practiced too much. If you know what I mean? Like they were just too tight and it felt dead. And they, all I was really getting watching them play was like their nervousness and they would talk mm. like, Oh, we mm. messed up. you know, teenage bands are like, sorry, we messed up that song. Oh, we're going to mess up <laughs> this one too. It's new and being, <laughs> it's stressful. It's not mm, mm. fun, it's not, it ruins everything. And so mm. I think that even starting way back then, I started to push myself away from that, those worries and of, mm. you know, of doing anything perfectly. And then also mm. the type of music that I liked was music that intentionally left in, I guess it's called lo-fi. So music that mm -hmm. sounded home recorded. To me, that seemed so much more uh, alive and vital so yeah it was an aesthetic but also it was part of just the punk culture that i was in in mm. olympia and the ideology of just like doing things yourself not per not aiming for some kind of like perfection or not not trying to fit the format of the existing status quo hmm. yeah very very in, into the, the 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 punk ethos of it, yeah. you know, very mm -hmm. yeah, just 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 express and without the you know being overly skilled, yeah. Um. And and, and what about I mean, hmm. and how do how do you how do you see it as a as a whole? Because it takes a lot of 
it takes a lot of work to appear slappy. That's what I'm trying to say. It's, it's, it, 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 um, as you describe, and I've seen a couple of interviews, you describe the process of production. It takes a lot of work to, to come out with something that in appearance sounds um, 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 unachieved. Um, well, I actually wasn't trying to make it sloppy on purpose. I was actually trying my uh -huh. hardest. It's just that I was trying my hardest to pursue something that felt right to me rather than mm. felt like correct in, in a mm -hmm. cultural sense. So mm -hmm. yeah, I did work really hard and I did try to make things sound as beautiful and as good as I could. Mm. It's just that maybe I was using a different palette of tones to choose mm. from. And also the studio, I mean, it, it wasn't a home studio, but it also, yeah, I know. in some ways it kind of was because mm. I, I spent, I lived one block away and I just had a key and I would go in. Most of the time it was available. It was a, the studio of K Records, Dub Narcotics Studio. And so it was like used by other artists, but mostly me during those times. I, I, I was free to just spend every day in there and experiment. So in some ways it was my home studio. Also the equipment was often not working all the way. It was just like, it was old vintage equipment that was always kind of breaking down and very mysterious to me. I'm not great at repairing stuff. So yeah, it was all of those problems added to the sound of the album. Some of the songs, like there's a song, uh, The Gleam Part Two, has this uh -huh. sound, it's like this shuddering, um, it's steel drums actually, and organ mm -hmm. bounced together. But it, it's only because that particular day, the, the tracks, the two tracks on the reel-to-reel -reel machine were doing that sound. I don't know what was happening with the machine. So the day I mixed it, it sounded like <laughs> and uh, I love it, but I wouldn't, you know, if I mixed it the next day or the day before, it wouldn't sound that way. Wouldn't happen. Wow, you know, how how contingent, contingency plays a role as well. I mean, something accidental can 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 be used mm -hmm. in, in the in in the song. And I gotta ask you this this use of a double tracking, which is like very pressing present in in the in in the album, you know, kind of. And and which is is a giveaway. That's when you can tell that it there's a lot of work behind it. Um, it, it and it's a very singular way to use the double tracking. Um, it what is how how that came to be? Was it also accidental, or you mean you know, doubling instruments or voices? Yeah, doubling instrument. Yes, you know the double instrument, the yeah. the, the double voices in the stereo. I think maybe it was because I learned to record using an eight track and then, mm. and then the studio got a 16 track. So all of a sudden I had twice as many tracks to use. And I, I had grown accustomed to squeezing everything onto eight tracks, but now all of a sudden I could expand and be more uh, generous with the instruments. And it, it was a, shortcut I found to, yeah, you record the instrument twice and pan it right and left, it creates this sort of spectrum of um, depth. I don't know how else to put it. So, hmm. I don't know if other people, it's probably a normal and common technique people do to make things feel bigger, but um, it's a classic move of mine. Yes, other people use it, but it, I mean, I think in microphones, it, it, it sounds very, again, homey, mm -hmm. intimate, you know, very, very, you know, uh, present, um, which, you know, not all artists. So there's like a combination of two and, 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 and yes, it's, it's being used, but I found very, a very singular use in, 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 in the microphone. Of, uh, of this doubling. Um, in, 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 in regards to the lyrics, um, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not gonna ask you about meanings and stuff like that, but, but I found them very, very expressive. 
but at the same time, very minimalistic. I mean, very, very to the point, uh, um, at least in, in, in this album, with the exception, I believe, of the fourth song that is very, it's a very large text. Um, it, where, where do you draw your, your style? Does it come from, you know, I know you're passionate about literature. You have mentioned, you know, some poets. I don't know if I can find some trace of the, you know, the, the minimalistic movement in literature in, 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 in United States, if it's something that also inspired you. Um, is, is that something that, you know, you, you, no, you I don't somehow think that, take? Mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's just intuitive, the way that the lyrics mm. have always been written for me. I don't think that there was a specific song, lyric writer that I was, inspired by. And in fact, yeah, I, I noticed um, at one point that I don't want to put choruses in my song. I don't like to have repeating parts mm. for some reason. Mm. And to me, it seemed like no big deal. I just don't like choruses. I'm like, why, why would I repeat myself? I already said that. Why should I say it again? <laughs> <laughs> but, but also maybe I think I just realized this like yesterday because I was listening to pop music and the chorus comes back so many times and I was like okay mm -hmm. to me that that is a signifier of like commercialism you're but I know mm -hmm. it comes, it's much older it comes from like folk music where they sing the chorus over and over and over and mm -hmm. it's not necessarily a commercial thing but to I don't know I'm more like I'm just communicating here I'm not trying to mm -hmm. change anyone's mind about anything or trying to brainwash anyone by saying, mm. by repeating myself. So if anything, that was an intentional songwriting thing, but no, the rest of it, I think is just intuitive. Mm. So it's, it's more like the work of uh, what, what, it, uh, what it used to be called in, in medieval times, uh, the, 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 the true the, the, you know, the, you know, the one that, and, and in fact, there are songs that they didn't, they didn't have um, established structure. It was more telling the news to the town and yeah. just describe it as it is, you know? Yeah, we, with some poetry, of course, lots yes. of metaphor and symbolism, but, um, but also not too obtuse or intentionally mm. misleading or anything. Mm. Well, um, Phil, I ran out of question. I mean, this this has been, you know, great, and and I really appreciate your your time and and, and your your words. Um, I I do have one last question. Let's settle the controversy for once. Vertical or horizontal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, how will you how will you place it in how do you place it in your record collection? When it's on the shelf, I put it horizontal so the spine is showing. But if it okay. was, yeah, just because of the spine. But if it's on display, I flip it. I because I, I does your jacket open? Can you unfold it? Yes. Yeah, like that. So it's actually like this that. is. Oh yeah. This is the there you go. It's just because I made the collage with the elephant riding on top of the green hmm. landscape pictures from uh, Slovenia, that's where those pictures were taken. Anyway, that's. I mean, oh, these pictures are from. Oh, these pictures are from Slo Slovenia. It looks very Nordic. Yeah, but, Slovenia. Um, it was just some kind of. Um, the hotel room window looking out across the countryside at night. That's what it looked like. Oh, look how interesting. Okay. Um, anytime soon coming to South Florida? I mean, do, do I have any, any hope to see you around any anytime soon? South Florida? Yeah. I would love to go there. I don't have plans to. I actually okay. was at the Miami airport recently for a layover mm. for like five mm. hours and I didn't leave the airport, but I was looking out the window and thinking, ah, 
I miss it here. I used to play in Florida kind of a lot. It's nice. Mm. Uh, mm. I had I had forgotten that it was nice. <laughs> you're 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 welcome to enjoy the weather. You know, any any time. Um, Phil, thank you so much again. Um, you know, let's let's keep in touch. As soon as uh, uh, this came out, the idea is to include this interview with another review that I'm going I'm going to be making of the uh, of the album. So as soon as it come out in in La Dosis, uh, which is an online magazine, I'll I'll send you the link. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it was fun. Thank you so much, Phil. Bye. Bye. Bye.